From the time it's made until the point of administration in your arm, vaccines travel safely across the globe because they are always kept cold. This cold chain ensures vaccines are stored and transported within the WHO's recommended temperature ranges using refrigerators in planes, trucks and cold boxes. Chilled and frozen food is also transported in the same way. Unfortunately, refrigerators, including air conditioned units in your vehicles and homes, contain dangerous chemicals, which if released into the atmosphere, become harmful greenhouse gases. We on Earth are protected from the harmful ultraviolet radiation of the sun by just a 3 mm thick ozone layer. In the 1980s, scientists began realizing that dangerous chemicals called chlorofluorocarbons were destroying the so-called good ozone, thinning out that protective layer over the Antarctic Ocean, creating what scientists call the ozone hole. Reducing ozone levels increases the amount of UV radiation reaching the Earth's surface, causing skin cancer, eye disease, and more. After signing the Montreal Protocol in 1989, Trinidad and Tobago is part of that international effort to phase out chlorofluorocarbons and hydrofluorocarbons, HFCs, under the Gikali Agreement. However, some hydrofluorocarbons are powerful greenhouse gases. But there is a future ahead. One of the gases we're looking toward is something called R600A. It's a hydrocarbon gas. And that is not damaging to the ozone layer and it does not cause climate change. So that is something that we are looking toward as we look toward the future in terms of implementation of the Montreal Protocol. Quite recently, we have developed something called the Professional Certification Scheme for Refrigeration and Air Conditioning Technicians. And this ensures that you as the consumer can be a bit confident that if your technician is professionally certified, that he is in fact engaging in good refrigeration practices. So that there is doing your part to protect the ozone layer. The ozone layer is starting to mend, and scientists believe it should mostly recover by the middle of the 21st century. I'm Ian Wallace, keeping it green for TDT News.